This customer walked in carrying a door and a picture of this stained glass window. He wants us to recreate and install this window into his door and he needs it done by the beginning of next week. So by looking at this pattern, I need to figure out how to adapt this design to fit the window opening of his door. And I need to see if we're even gonna have the glass colors that will match his style. And I need to make sure it's done first thing next week. You can tell by the image that was brought in that the style of this window will bring a classic yet timeless look to any space. Now you might think this stained glass has a vintage look to it. And I would agree. It's really more of an Art Nouveau style. Art Nouveau is a romantic style that developed in the late 18, early 1900s. It had a focus on traditional techniques and craftsmanship taking inspiration from nature. So we had to modify the design to fit within the width while still holding on to a similar look and feel. Back in the days that this style of stained glass was popularized, this pattern would have been hand drawn. But now we have the technology to print this out in the simple click of a button. Now it's not that easy as every inch of the window must be carefully customized to fit in the door's window opening. With the pattern made, it's time to pick out glass. The design has multiple translucent colors of glass with a particular pattern to them, requiring us to have access to a large stock of glass ready for immediate use. Let's see what glass stock we have to work with. This particular glass is called English Muffle. This texture of glass was crafted around the same time that the Art Nouveau style was popularized. It has a familiar aesthetic to old stained glass windows. Art Nouveau styled stained glass windows were commonly translucent instead of opalescent. This is another key characteristic of English muffled glass making it the perfect option for this project. Fortunately, we stocked 22 English muffled colors giving us a healthy palette to apply to this panel. Now that we have the pattern ready and the types of glass we need, tomorrow the craftsman will get started on cutting this window out and I'm starting to feel it's going to be a very tight deadline. Day two of this project, we get started cutting the glass. We started off cutting this window with some border glass. The border glass has long straight pieces that are the simplest cuts of the entire window. Whenever you are cutting straight lines of glass, you're going to need a straight edge. You may also need grossing pliers and running pliers. Both of these will lend a hand in breaking glass in different ways. For a more in-depth tutorial on how to cut glass, check the card up on the screen. But here's a quick rundown. To break the glass apart, we use a mix of tapping with the glass cutters, our hands, and pliers. It can save time to try to use the tool you are already holding to break the glass apart instead of reaching for others, but sometimes it's pretty much impossible to do without your trusty pliers. We are using 10 different colors of glass on this project, and all of them are from the Paul Wismack Glass Company. The main type English Muffle is a heavily textured glass, but all textured glass also have a smooth side, so they're pretty easy to cut. Cutting rectangular border pieces is a different animal compared to cutting the curved pieces. If you're starting with a large piece like we are here, you'll need to bring it down to a manageable size. Once trimmed down, we'll normally cut a piece out of that, which will encompass the full piece you're looking to cut. Sometimes these pieces that have steep angles and sharp curves will give you some trouble so it's best to have enough glass for a few tries. Once we put the first score into the glass, we'll try to tap the score through and break it on the score line. Sometimes the line will run off into a random direction and you're back to square one. Even after you've taken your time to carefully cut out the perfect piece, it may still need a little bit more effort to get it to fit perfectly. This means a few trips to the grinder. We'll mark where on the piece it needs to be grinded down with a sharpie and then make the necessary adjustments. Many of the pieces in this window were the same size, so we're able to cut down a large rectangular piece to the correct width, then cut down the heights for each one, minimizing the number of cuts required per piece. It's a good practice to cut the biggest pieces down first so that you have the cutoffs to use on the smaller pieces. This way you'll waste as little glass as possible. The Craftsman is wearing gloves here, which is a fantastic way to protect your hands from the sharp glass edges. Now that the glass cutting is pretty much finished up, it's time to begin the window assembly. The cutting took a little longer than I thought it would, as it's already the end of day three. Tomorrow, hopefully we can get this window assembled and soldered. At the start of day four, you are seeing all the pieces of glass filling up the pattern. You're starting to see all the colors of the palette we selected coming together. 
this is the first glimpse into how the final product is really going to look. We are using a half inch lead perimeter with a quarter inch lead in the inside area of the window. Some lead formulas are stiffer while others are easier to bend. We use the stiffer formula of the lead to keep this window in pristine condition so that it will last a lifetime. While this material is stiff, it is still bendable, allowing you to mold it to the curved edges of the glass. That's the reason why lead is used, because it's easily malleable, and yes, it is the lead that is considered toxic. That's why you see us wearing gloves whenever handling these items to limit our contact as much as possible. You should secure the glass pieces with nails or even thumbtacks like you're seeing here. Without securing the windows, you'll run into problems with the glass moving around as it's being built, making the construction pretty much impossible. To get neat joints, we curve the lead around the workpiece, but leave it a little bit long. We'll overlay it on top of the adjacent piece, trace the overlap, and then cut it for a neat joint. Sometimes when you have a few complicated pieces in a cluster, can lead them up and slide them into place as a small assembly. The assembly process really only requires a few essential tools. Your mallet, some nails, lead, wood forms, and the lead dikes. The assembly took another day, and now we are at the start of day five, still with the stained glass panel unsoldered. Today, we need to finish soldering and applying stained glass putty. Since it's Friday, optimally this panel will dry over the weekend, allowing us to put the finishing touches on it first thing Monday morning. This way, it's ready for pickup just in the nick of time. So now that the assembly is complete, you need to secure the panel, make sure it's square and the right size by measuring it, and then it is soldering time. Remember, when soldering, you want to have a well-ventilated area as the fumes are toxic. We normally use a paste flux and a 50-50 solder. This means it's 50% lead and 50% tin. When soldering, you want to do your best to make sure all the lead lines are lined up and look to be a consistent line, even if they are not connected. This will give you the best overall appearance. Soldering is a simple process. First, we clean the lead with a wire brush and apply flux. Then, we use a hot iron that heats up the roll of solder, melting it into the flux joint and once everything cools, makes it hold together. Once the first side is done, you'll flip it and repeat the exact same process. This method has gone pretty much unchanged since the beginnings of leaded panel assembly. Slight variations in the materials and tools over the years, but the fundamentals of the process are very similar. Cut the lead to size, clean each joint with flux, and you may be interested to learn that tallow was a traditional material used in lieu of a modern flux. Then solder using a hot iron, whether it be electric or some other primitive iron. We've got the assembly complete and now we are rushing this panel over to the putty table to keep us on track. The stained glass putty is a mixture of linseed oil and whiting that we apply using a brush. If the mixture is too thick to apply, you can cut it using a solvent like mineral spirits or naphtha. You do need to be careful not to make it too runny because it will take ages to dry. And when you need to get these panels into eager customers' hands, time is of the essence. After the putty is applied, you have to remove the excess. We do so by using molding plaster. This material absorbs all the oil and removes moisture to help these panels cure a little bit faster. After application, we normally allow these panels to rest for a few days and then come back to do a final cleaning. And thank goodness it's Friday. We'll let this dry and finish it up Monday morning. It is now day six and we are on the last step of finishing this project. Time to do the final cleaning. It's an attention to detail process even to the extent of tracing each piece with the wood pick to remove putty that's locked in those hard to reach areas. And we finished everything up just in time, but it was definitely a stretch, even with a talented team like ours. So if you are going to do a project like this, give yourself more than a week, especially if you need to source materials. Quality of materials will differ depending on the source. Glass manufacturers classified their batches based on tiers of quality with different variables affecting them, such as clarity and color correctness. We always purchase the top tier for all of these products to ensure the absolute best product. The same can't always be said about the big box stores, so you'll want to keep that in mind depending on your source. 
Then the last component is of course the time requirement and the actual quality of the assembly. The skill of a craftsman with one, 10, 20, or even 30 years will have an important effect on these variables. This project I would consider to be an intermediate level. A beginner might have a bit of a harder time, but it would not be impossible for them. If you are an experienced craftsman, you should be able to complete this project in about 16 to 24 working hours. Now that it's done, here's a look at the finished product. Just get a look at those beautiful textures and colors. I am very pleased with the way this window turned out. From the balance of the pale colors and the design, it reminds me of a classic stained glass look with old world historic vibes. This English muffled texture brings me back to Europe in the late 1800s. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I think you'll enjoy these too. Thanks for watching.